Hello everybody, I'm Prow and I have the ultimate modded Minecraft video here for you today. If you're playing Minecraft Java Edition or you're thinking about starting, you're likely going to be using some mods or playing full mod packs even. So to help you out, I wanted to make a beginner's guide on the easiest way to load mods and shaders, talk about mod loaders like Forge and Fabric, the importance of your Minecraft version, how to properly set your memory settings, and even make your own custom mod pack. Basically, you're gonna be a modded pro by the end of this video, so let's dive right in. So this is meant to be a little bit more of a beginner's guide. If you've been playing modded Minecraft for a while, you probably know like or have your own ways of applying mods. So this isn't necessarily for you guys, but if you haven't looked into how to load mods recently, you want a more easier modern way of doing it, or you've never loaded mods to begin with, that's what we're gonna be going over here today to try to make this process easy, simple, and quick for you guys. Now, these methods that we're gonna be using are gonna be using either Curse Forge or Modrinth. These are great like mod marketplaces in a way. It's not really a marketplace. You don't buy anything from them. All the mods are free, but it's a place where you can go and select the mods or mod packs that you want and then easily load them in, have it launch the game for you, even pre-select some settings. And it just makes everything nice and easy to find and apply and use all in one spot. Before we get into those though, you need to understand a couple of basic pieces of information to make sure that as you go through this process, you don't make any big mistakes that are gonna crash your Minecraft game and leave you confused as to what happened. So the first thing you need to know is there are two different types of mod loaders. You have Fabric and you have Forge. Now I'm using my Modrinth here, but Curse Forge will would be the same thing. Or if you're pulling these like separately off of a website or wherever you get your mods from, you will see here I have this simply optimized mod pack or Sodium Plus or Pokemon Elysium. All say they are for fabric. Whereas right here with Dying Light says it's for Forge. Now you cannot mix and match fabric with forge so let's say i'm playing cobblemon which is a fabric mod pack but i want to add a mod to it that is not fabric let's say i wanted to load in rubidium to that mod pack for whatever reason and this is just a random example but you can see where this is for forge so i would not be able to use a forge mod with a fabric mod pack and vice versa. Now, some you will see work for both. Like I can scroll down here and we will see fabric and forge. So there's a fabric version and a forge version of this particular mod. Those are fine, but you need to make sure fabric goes with fabric, forge goes with forge. You do not intermix these because you will have problems. Another important one is game version. So if you're gonna load a mod pack that's in version 1.18, like let's say Vault Hunters, for example, which is what I've been playing lately, and then you wanna add in a mod on top of it. Now this is a bad example because this is Iris Shaders and this is a fabric mod. We're gonna ignore that for a second. But let's say I wanted to add in something like this that would give me the capability to load in shaders into the mod pack that I'm playing. But the mod pack is 1.18. If I then go and download this version right here of Iris or whatever mod I'm looking at, and this is for game version 1.20, well, when I try to load that mod pack, Vault Hunters or whatever you're playing, it's going to crash because this 1.20 mod is not compatible with other mods that are in an older version. All of your game versions need to match. So in this case, I would do a 1.18.2 version of the mod to add into my mod pack. Make sure 100% of the time your mod loader is the same fabric versus forge make sure the game version is the same 1.18 1.19 1.20 whatever it is these are the two most common things that are going to cause your game to crash when you try to load is there some type of incompatibility with loader or with version now mod packs are the easiest way to get into playing mods so you can go to like something like modrinth here click on mod packs and it'll give you a whole bunch of mod packs that are put together these mod packs are a combination of a lot of different mods together to make what you're ultimately going to end up playing. Some of these mod packs may have 20 or 30 different mods on them. Or if I click on Vault Hunters here on Curse Forge, this has 183 mods as part of it. Basically, somebody has taken the time to make a, their own custom mods and include a bunch of existing mods and put them all into a mod pack. Make sure that everything is compatible to make it easy for you to where all you have to do is click a play or an install button and that's it. You don't have to think about it anymore. 
everything's compatible, you're all good to go. You can even go as far as making your own custom mod packs if you use something like Modrinth. I'm gonna go over this here in just a moment, but let's say you just like normal vanilla Minecraft gameplay, but you would like a little bit extra added in there and you wanna search through a number of popular mods that maybe improve your performance, make the game look a little prettier or add a couple of little things in to enhance your vanilla experience, give you a little bit of quality of life. Well, you can go through and you can actually add a whole bunch of these pack these mods together. You're going to have to make sure that they're all compatible with each other. Modrinth would help you with that. And then you can have your own custom mod pack that you've made for yourself to play your worlds however you want to play. So we've been talking a lot about Curse Forge and a lot about Modrinth. So you can download those by searching on Google or just going to their website, curseforge.com, modrinth.com and you're gonna to wanna to download their app. You don't have to technically to play their mods. Like you could go to curseforge.com, go to Minecraft, select a mod or a mod pack, and you could download it, but then you'll have to load it manually because you don't have the like actual mod launcher um, as part of what you're doing. So you'll wanna get the CurseForge app or go to Modrinth, get the Modrinth app. And these will actually serve as both your like storefront to look for and freely download these mods and then actually launch them from the application like we have here. So if you're doing CurseForge, you go to the website, you download the app and you run it, um, you're going to have to log in to your Minecraft account on this app because that's how it's going to actually launch your game. It has to be linked with your account. Once you do that, you can then go through and search mods and mod packs and launch and run them. In the case of say Better Minecraft that I have right here, I could go to Better Minecraft. I could click the three little dots right here to change which version that I'm playing. There's a little drop down right here that tells me what version of the mod pack it is. Maybe I want to play with a friend. We got to make sure we match versions or maybe I want to just keep up to date and have the latest version. You would select the version there and hit continue and it will install slash download that latest version to make sure that's what you're running. Everything from the mod packs to the individual mods work that way, right? So I can come here to an individual mod. I don't know what any of these are. I'm just gonna click a random one, Farmer's Delight. I'm gonna click it. I'm gonna go to the versions tab here for individual mods and then it'll tell me what their version number is, what the game version is, and I'm gonna click install on that, and then it will appear, if I click it, it's going to install it to a new profile or an existing profile. I'm gonna create new profile here. I can name whatever that I want that profile to be, and then it will show up in the My Mod Pack section. I could even do something like select this villager names pack that's right here. I could go to versions. I could scroll down to let me find 1.18.2 i can click install on that it's going to ask me where i want to install it i'm going to select profile and i'm going to install it to vault hunters hit the install button and then it's added into the launcher here for my vault hunters mod pack and you can see it down here villager names if i wanted to remove it from some reason here inside of curse forge i can't do it here but that leads me to the next important thing that you need to know which is how to get to your modded folder in case you want to customly add in maybe from outside of curse forge any mods all you do is when you're inside your mod pack click the three dots here click on open folder this will open the game folder click on mods and then all of the mods are going to be listed here so i want to get rid of that villager one i'm just going to go down here to villager names i'm going to click delete and i'm all good to go that gets it out or if i custom download a mod i want to add into this mod pack i can just drop it in here and it's good to go just remember to make sure it's compatible through all the things we talked about earlier and your model work one more thing i need to show you how to do here in curseforge before we move over to a quick overview of modrinth which is largely the same thing and that is setting your memory profile because on java edition the game only default allocates two gigabytes of RAM to run the game. And if you have more memory available than that to use, then that's you, you want to use it because two gigabytes is not a lot. Your game's going to run terrible. My general rule of thumb is about one third of the RAM on your total system you are safe to allocate to Minecraft. You can go up to 50% maybe, but I like to play safe one third. So if your computer only has eight gigabytes of RAM, then you could allocate three gigabytes of RAM to Minecraft. If your computer has 16 gigs, you could put six gigs of RAM to the game. If you have 32 gigabytes of RAM, you could safely put 12 gigabytes towards Minecraft, etc. And where you're gonna do this is two different areas. You can either apply it to all mods by clicking on settings, clicking on Minecraft and coming down to the allocated memory setting here and setting the RAM. I have mine set to 12,288 megabytes, which is 12 gigabytes of RAM, or you can assign it by game. I could click on Vault Hunters right here, click on the little dots, click on profile options, 
and then I can use the memory setting here as well. I could click use system memory settings. That'll use the memory setting from the like app itself. So what we did a moment ago, or I can assign individually by doing that here. Either way is fine. And then when you launch the game, I would click play here. It's going to pull up the Minecraft launcher and it will already have Java edition selected. And it's going to um, have a Vault Hunters loaded in here. So I guess technically it's not Curse Forge. It's not Modrath launching the game. It's preparing the Minecraft launcher to launch the game for you. And if I were to take a step further, you don't have to do this part, but if I click on installations and I click on the little dots here and click edit, you can see by clicking on more options that it has assigned the appropriate amount of memory. There's one, two, two, eight, eight megabytes but you don't have to worry about that just once it pulls this up hit play and you're good to go modrinth is largely the same but it's actually a little bit easier a little bit more intuitive it doesn't quite have the library of content that curse forge has but it's very nice and it's growing rapidly so if i were to click on my home page here pretty much everything i've gone over is the same go to modrinth.com download the app and run it log in etc everything on how to use is essentially the same i can go to the home page here i can search popular packs or popular mods or i can use the search function here to search specific mod packs or specific mods, um, even specific shaders if I wanted to, or I can make my own custom mod packs. So for example, I was doing a create mod pack before. If I click on this, you'll see that I have like the normal stuff here for create, but then I also went through and matched up additional mods that I wanted to use with create that I thought would enhance the experience. It's super easy to do. All you do is you take your mod pack, whatever it is. I could, for example, click on the Aether pack here. I could click the add content button and now I can search for mods. Let's say I wanted to add in a zoom mod. We'll just click a simple one here, vanilla zoom. I'm going to click it. I'm going to install it. Now I'm going to go back to my library, click on Aether. And there you see it. Vanilla zoom is in there and it is all compatible. Um, typically speaking, Modern is going to do a really good job about matching the version for you automatically um, to make sure that there's no conflicts. And when you try to launch, if there is a conflict, it's pretty good about finding that conflict and telling you what it is. Last but not least, one final thing I want to give you. A lot of mod packs do not include a shader loader. So I know a lot of people like to run shaders and make the game look better. They can help you get a, a performance boost if you set the settings right and you get the right shaders, etc. And I'm not a pro on what all of those are that are best. So do your research there, but you need to add a shader loader to a lot of different mod packs. So what you can do is you can search for if you're going to be using fabric you're going to need to download more than likely if it's not part of your pack sodium which is the rendering engine and then you're going to need to download iris which is the shader loader or if you're using forge you need to download rubidium which is basically the forge equivalent of sodium and oculus which is essentially the forge equivalent of iris once you have both of these attached to your fabric or forge mod pack you can then download and use shaders. Now, Modrinth has a really easy way to just find the shaders you want, click install, and it'll put them in there for you. But in case you don't have that, you're usually going to load shaders in game. Loading in shaders is super simple. Whenever you get into your game, once you have those things downloaded and added to your mod pack, all you need to do is go to options, go to video settings, go to shader packs, then you take your downloaded shader pack, like I have complimentary reimagined here, and you would just drag it and drop it right there. It even tells you to do it. Drag and drop shader packs to add. The shader packs are a zip file. You don't need to unzip them or anything. Just take the zip, drop it in here. And then once you click on there, you can make sure that it is enabled and go to shader pack settings and start changing your settings to whatever it is that you like. Hopefully you found this information useful. I try to be as thorough as possible while keeping things nice and simple, giving you step-by-step -step directions on everything. If you are a modded pro and you have any extra pieces of advice you'd like to drop down in the comments below, please do to help the people read in the comments out. If you learned something new in this, drop me a comment down below. Let me know what you learned and how it helped you. Make sure you click that like button if you enjoyed the video. Make sure you subscribe to the channel as we are now starting to get into modded content here on the channel. I've been a bedrock content creator for five years now and i am moving up and moving on to modded content uh starting with vault hunters so make sure you click that subscribe button i thank you so much for watching and you have a good day